In this lesson, we'll talk about some of the on-target presentation features in Mudbox 2012. So when we talk about on-target presentation, we're really just talking about building the models and painting the textures within some sort of a context. So uh, right now, we've got our T-Rex sitting here on a grid with a gray background, and there's really no context for him. I don't know if he's going to be on sort of a desert planet with bright, harsh lighting. I don't know if he's going to be in a in a you know, a, a jungle with lots of shadows. Uh, so really, the textures that we create, the sculpting that we do, is really out of context at this point. So what we can do is start to use some of the features of Mudbox to put our model more into context of what our final product is going to be. So there are a few ways that we can start to do this. One of the ways is that we can manipulate the lighting. Uh, right now, we just have a single directional light that is actually locked to the camera, so pretty much lighting stays pretty consistent as we rotate around because the camera is moving with us. Okay, We can come in with that selected and change the intensity of the light. We could come in and change the color of the light if we wanted to. You can see just changing the color of the light completely changes the look of the model. So if we were to paint this guy white and we have a red lighting on him, you know the, the texture is not going to look the same. And so this is what we're talking about when we talk about on target. So to actually start to uh, change this up a little bit we can start to add additional lights so we can go to create lights and you can see we have point lights directional lights and image based lights let's go ahead and start by adding a another directional light so we'll go ahead and add that to our scene we select the light itself we can also click on to turn the uh, locked camera off we can turn on show manipulator and show light and this will show us where that lights actually pointed so you can see it's pointed at him head on so what we can do now is kind of come in here and I can just grab this and rotate it around. Okay. And click kind of anywhere. And so I can kind of move this around so maybe it's pointing more from up on the top. Okay. And it's not locked to the camera, so it's going to stay there no matter what. I can take maybe the intensity down a little bit. Let's take our light one turn the lock to camera off and then let's take this and rotate it around from this side so maybe something like this but let's take the intensity down a little bit more okay I want to make sure that my other one is pointed the right direction here let's take that intensity up a bit I'll turn that off so you can see we have this sort of key on this side, then maybe a little bit of a fill here. Maybe on the fill, we can you know change the color of this a little bit. Maybe it's night, or maybe it's we want a little bit of green in there. Okay, we can also turn on shadows with our lights. We can turn those shadows on. We can change the depth map resolution as well okay we can also add an HDR light to our scene so if we go to create lights we can add an image based light and by default image based light we select this will come in with this three-point lighting default we can choose a different image to actually use and so let's go ahead and jump through here and so we'll go come down to uh, we want to come down to textures light probes and then we can choose any of these that come with Mudbox that we want to choose. We've got Overcast uh, that we can use. Try that. And you can try these different ones. They'll give you different results. We can take the intensity down. Okay. Let's go ahead and choose our two directional lights and take the intensity of those down as well. Okay. If you don't like that one, you can come in and select another one. We can try maybe one of these. We get sort of a kind of a nighttime effect and so you can just have a little fun with it playing with what these look like you can see we get a number of different looks here by using our HDR light okay so you can experiment with that and then come in and experiment with the, the other lighting that you have so you can see now we're starting to get color on our model from the light you can see that we get shadows and so forth so this is all giving us more information for when we go in and start sculpting and painting materials uh, painting uh, textures rather it gives us more information to work with puts it a little bit more into context of what the final outcome will be okay now we also can come in here to our viewport filters and this will give us a more uh, a little bit better idea 
of what this is going to look like as well. So uh, there are a couple of ambient occlusion viewport filters that we can turn on. And turning these on just gives us uh, kind of a visual change to our model here in the viewport as we are sculpting. So if I want to turn on the cavity occlusion, you can see it gets in to all of those little crevices in here. You can select these viewport filters and you can change some of the values. They all have different sliders. We can increase the strength, for instance, on this one. This just brings out those crevices a little bit more. We've also got quality settings that we can change. Okay, and we also have ambient occlusion here. If we go ahead and turn that on, you can see it's more of an overall occlusion where we've got these areas that are inset a little bit more. You can see those get some darker shading. If we turn off our cavity occlusion, you can kind of see that here. You can see we have a number of additional settings for our ambient occlusion. You can see how that's just more getting into those lower areas. Okay, we can have both of those on if we want. We can also turn on the tone mapper to change the gamma. So if we want to change the gamma settings, we can do that in here. We can also uh, come in and modify the depth of field. So if I turn on depth of field, you can see right now this part's in focus. So I want to actually change the focus distance to be closer. And as I change it, you can see we can see that change. Now I can also increase the depth of field so we can see more of our dinosaur or less. We'll increase that and we can take down that blur amount a little bit. So now you can see that just kind of the tail is blurred out but it just it looks a little bit more realistic. Puts it in a little bit more context if we're actually going to see this T-Rex with an actual camera then we may get some of those effects and so that just helps us get a little bit better idea of what that's going to look like. Okay, now we have three more viewport filters down here at the bottom. And we go ahead and turn these off. We can turn on screen distance. That gives us kind of a depth pass for this. Okay, we can also turn on, you can change the, the levels there. You can also turn on the normal map. It basically gives us a normal map. If you want to do kind of a relief of this, you can just save this out. Just kind of a normal map of our viewport filter. And then non-photorealistic, which is kind of fun. You can see that we can get kind of a drawn or sketched look, but we're still able to, to move around in real time and do our sculpting on this. Okay, you can change some of the values down here and make that look a little bit different. Okay, so really, I tend to use the occlusion filters and the depth of field a little bit more, kind of puts things in context, and then you can go back to your lighting and manipulate your lighting, really get it matched up if you want this to be maybe a little bit more yellow, have a little yellow in it. Okay, so the, the whole idea is of the lighting and the, the viewport filters is to come in and just put your model in context a little bit more so that the work that you do is not wasted because you, you do all the texturing work and then you realize that it's going to be lit with a red light or it's going to be in a particular kind of environment and the material is not going to or the texture is not going to work for you. So it just gives you a little bit more information up front so that you're able to uh, spend your time more wisely. Okay, so now we've talked about uh, some of the on-target presentation features. Let's now talk about some of the basics of painting textures here in Mudbox. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that in the next lesson.